What's up, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of The Usual Suspects. I am your girl, Shar Johnson, with my husband, the God, Brother Hiram Akeem. What's up, babe? What's up, girl? We in the building like we do every day about this time. Or should I say every Tuesday about this time. We want you guys to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let somebody know the usual suspect. It's being talked about courtesy of the reporter newspaper. Char Johnson, without no delay, let's talk about it. What are we talking about right now? Well, let's talk about it. What the hell is going on with the media? Social media comedian and influencer Wellington spits some major facts about Ice Spice's recent performance at the Power 105 Powerhouse concert. Would she wear a Betty Boot costume or Weddy Boot, as she named the look on social media? Wellington also pointed out a nine-year-old who went viral for his drill rap lyrics, shaking my head. The general public has been promoting this type of behavior since Jerry Springer, using our most valuable commodity, which is attention. We retain that which we pay attention to. Where attention goes, energy flows, admonished one person. They don't sign people with talent anymore. They promote this trash to distract us. Wow. You know what? This is crazy. First off, I was giving my girl Ice Spice a little leeway from all of the trash rappers. I was. She was kind of, you know, she's going popular now. You see her on the um, commercials, the Dunkin' Donuts commercials with Batman, or should I say Ben Affleck. You know, so she's crossing over and everything. But then I'm often reminded by she's no different. She's just being commercially accepted. She's no different than all these other perverted ass rappers that we're seeing out here because just this recent, as of last weekend, old Ice Spice is on stage with her whole crotch and ass out. I mean, the dress looked it. Baby, I'm sorry. I got to damn this damn dress. Yeah, it was just terrible for the community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. But I'm just saying, you know, um, Geez, man, they want you to believe that the black woman is just a highly, highly sex thirsty thing. Like this is what we see in our communities every day. Unfortunately, as a direct result of um, what the media is projecting out, we are mimicking what we see. Or should I say our young women are mimicking what we see. You know how I know? Because you look at Facebook, uh, you look at Instagram, you look at whatever the hell you're looking at. These chicks are in their own bathrooms, okay? Their own bedrooms with the door closed, daddy over here, in their own um, living rooms with mommy at work or they somebody gone. And they fucking twerking, shaking their ass. They, they taking pictures and in a night, in a nightwear, they panty, they G-strings, no draws. Sometimes they doing it on their own. And some say this is a direct result of what's being prop, I mean, promoted during the media to keep us uh, looked upon like this. And, and, you know, we do know Ice Spice, that's her job, but it ain't her job. I guess it is her job to look like that. That's what it is. That's how she got, that's how she got the gig. But sometimes I feel like this, um, it just be, all money ain't good money. And just because it's, a so-called job, that don't mean that's something that you have to do, which really baffles me is you had on a Betty Boot outfit. She called it Wetty Boot. And you call it Wetty Boot. Okay, but a person like me, when you says Wetty Boot, that don't sound <laughs> like <laughs> what you portray. You know wet, wet. Yeah, but to me, in all honesty, when we say boop, just thinking about when you have kids. Oh, did you poo poo on yourself? Oh, oh you no. got the stinky boo boo. You say wet these boots. I like to mean you inviting some other things. And then what really uh, got me was you wanted to rename Betty Boot to you as a Wetty Boot, who was a non melanated sexualized character that was on paper that you wanted to bring to life, not. I ain't going to even say forgetting. Obviously, you do not know 
how they've always over sexualized the African American woman from here to the diaspora where they had women who had nice bodies and stuff and they had them sitting there as we say like zoo animals where you can come and see black women with the big butt acts and naturally big boobs stuff that they wasn't getting injected in you i think they need to do some little education so i am actually a ice spice put you on ice because you not nice i like that i like that but some people do believe betty boo that was an uh, african-american do your homework. Somebody do your homework. Let, let us know what it is. But some people do believe she was an Afrocentric, a Afrocentricity woman, a black woman depicted in those things. Look at the hair. But that's what some people say. But listen, also in this article, we got the little uh, six-year-old, little eight-year-old, whatever the hell I own. The, the, yeah, the little boy. Um, little boy uh, rapper. Rapper well, that, that they got going around here that is going so-called viral. And some of the stuff that uh, he was saying. And um, right now, I got to shout out Michi X. I know a lot of people, you know, don't really rock with her. But I got to shout out because a lot of the things that she was saying, let the truth be told, she was telling the truth. She was um, pointing out some things that um, goes over our head. They may not like um, how she says things. But if you get past all of that and listen to what she says, what she's talking about is straight up real because... There is no way on this good God green earth, as they would say, that there is six years old in the black community or the black culture that's talking like that, walking like that, or anything of that nature. Hell, the 16-year-old went to school to kindergarten, which I know personally. A 16-year-old in kindergarten? I mean, a six-year-old in kindergarten. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say 16. Six-year-old in kindergarten. I know this personally. Can't even say certain things. They're going to put that little child up out of school. So I know that that's not our culture. Oh, black yeah, that's culture. the thing because the question is, it, as the video is going out, people are saying, is this our culture? And no. they're depicting this music video. And let's just be honest. I'm going to keep it a buck. Let's just be honest. This particular video is produced by adults, written by adults, or whatever the hell they they in the studio recording it by adults and the imagery is some some adults in the video and he's doing straight up and down nigga shit okay and the lyrics he was saying I mean, was off come on we ain't, the even chain. Gonna, we ain't even gonna say it. we ain't gonna say off the, the chain but he's a six year old talking the same bs that they are talking and this is what's crazy like Michi X here big ups to Michi X and I have to differ a lot of people do listen to our beloved sister Michi X they just, like you say. I listened to her. She had a lot of following, huge following as well. And some people don't like her because she's conscious as hell. I'm telling you, they we don't need like a how, how she delivers. The we need message. a voice like that. Uh, somebody got to be un uncompromising during these times. Somebody got to be not motivated by the money and motivated by the movement. Big ups to my girl <laughs> BTX. Yeah. Not to be confused with my girl Star. Okay. <laughs> but listen, what she was saying was dope. Yeah. She's saying the racist power structure that governs this music industry, this this YouTube, this thing, don't allow us to talk freely on Facebook and Instagram. We can't talk freely, but they will put a six-year-old child talking sex. Talking at sex and the freely and the and the one thing that she said that I thought was most powerful that some people may not realize, it was straight up child abuse. And I thought that was I was dope. Check out MeTX, check out her video and everything. We'll put it in the link so you can understand what that's our system was talking about. What are we talking about next? Uh, well, Breezy. Chris Brown allegedly ran up on a man, injuring him in England, and he faces a lawsuit. Chris Brown is facing another lawsuit for rocking the noggin off a man with a Don Julio 1942 bottle at Tate Nightclub in England. Lord. When will the lawsuits against this man end? TMZ reports that Abe claims the sensational singer used the bottle to deliver crushing blows to the head, leading to his unconsciousness and hospitalization due to his alleged injuries. Abe suffered lacerations to his head and had torn ligaments in his legs, allegedly. We are going to allegedly the heck 
out of this piece. We're not about to get sued, okay? The alleged victim says he and Chris were homies for like seven years and was taken aback by the alleged attack. He thought Breezy was initially welcoming him with a hug. Now, Abe is trying to get Chris to cut a check for his emotional distress and trauma. So why don't you tell me what happened with um, Chris Brown? I know we just read it and everything. This man is often getting in trouble. But it sounds like to me it was somebody he knew and they're going to try to juice this thing for the content. Talk to me. Yeah, so this goes back to, you know, know who's in your circle and know the people that's around you. Sound like to me, this is some of these basketball wives and different people that have been around a person for a long time and, you know, kind of know who they is and how they get down and know how to gut punch them where it hurts. This is somebody he's supposed to be cool with for years. So if you ask me, in my humble opinion, you know who he is, you know what triggers him, you know how he gets down, and you know what he will and what he, what he will not do. Because you've been around for him for a minute, I'm talking about years, years, what, seven to nine years, Um, what I just read. So you've been around him for years. So you know who he is. You're going to try to act like, you know, uh, I thought he was trying to embrace me before he hit me, you know, with that bottle. Come on, bro. It's more to the story than what we are reading in this article. I believe it's more to it than what's really going on. And you seize the opportunity while y'all was out kicking it and drinking in England, whatever the case may be, and from your payday, because um, you probably, now this is my humble opinion, you probably got some back bills paid. You know we got to start by playing student loans now. You might got a bunch of student loans. Now that's just my opinion. So at the end of the day, you know, I know Chris ain't going to give it to me willingly, so I can just jump on the bandwagon on everybody else and just get that money up out him and soon. Now this is my humble opinion because there is no way that you've been friends with him this long for this many years and y'all way over there in England and all of a sudden Kristen busting you upside your head with a bottle. Well, I'm, so it's, it, I'm sorry. I, I got to see some more come out. This, I'm this sure, he did, I'm sure he did hit him, but you said he triggered him. Um, listen, first off, as before we go to the next page, I want to thank you. I see so many people on this social media platform, right, on different platforms, and they insinuate what they're saying is the truth, or they or they say something that they are surmising or generalizing as is, as is the truth. It seems like you went to Mecca Media School, baby girl, because <laughs> you're saying, in my humble opinion, or this is what I think, I am, you literally putting the onus on you. Yeah. You're not just saying this is what happened, because you know you're responsible as a journalist to convey what you know and what you're thinking and what you're assuming. And I want to thank you for taking the time to use those words like, in my humble opinion. And some of you guys may need to follow suit to the to the lovely queen. Don't just say what you know. If you are guessing and you mathematically putting something together, it don't mean it's the truth. truth it could right. be what you think is right. truth. But you have to say, in my humble opinion, or in my uh, general thought process, I think. What are we talking about next, Miss Lady? Okay, well, we're talk well, we're let's talk about it. Ice Cube educates Twitter users who seem to blame NWA for the growth of immortality in the Black community. Ice Cube recently invited his ex, formerly Twitter, fans for a question and answer session. His fans could ask him any question under the sun. However, most questions were queries about his upcoming album, Man Down. Other questions touched on the rapper's NWA group. One notable question took a swipe at NWA, trying to partly blame the group for the bad behavior in the black community. Was NWA part of the agenda to destroy conscious rap, which was growing in popularity at the time? And was NWA trying to promote sex, violence, and gangster behavior amongst the youth? An ex-user asked. The rapper chipped in on the critical question. He disagreed with the commentators that NWA helped fuel more decadence in the black community. 
He reminded his audience that the same negative social issues were already in existence in the Black and Latino communities long before NWA was created. Other similar sentiments were expressed by other commentators who also blamed NWA for the rot in the Black communities. Ice Cube responded to these other questions as well, defending NWA over and over. Crack was in the neighborhoods a decade before Gangsta Rap. In the 70s, they called it Freebase, Cube Road. So was heroin, weed, mollies, gangbanging, drive-bys, pimping, and hoeing. Dropping out of school, young girls getting pregnant cussing and then using the word ninjas it was all here before nwa wow <laughs> oh, man wow. that's a that's a that's a handful man uh first off let's take it from the conscious rap perspective once right. upon a time rap was fully engulfed in the conscious movement the pro-black movement the uh, the islamic movement right right the black consciousness was so prevalent in hip hop once upon a time. That is correct. Now, some people theorize, some people theorize that the powers that be that govern hip hop, you understand, says we got to get rid of this. People are waking up. Black people are waking up. Consciousness is becoming um, a, a fad. You know, we was wearing the black medallions, all types of kinds right, of right. locks and everything. And they was like, wait a minute, hold on. The powers that be that governs the music industry say, we need to kill this form of hip hop. And we have people like NWA spearheading it through independent record label, okay, Priority Records, Ruthless Records, distributed through Priority, okay, single handedly on a popular scale ushered in the next level in the popular what they call gangster rap. What they call it gangster, gangster rap, rap, right? And so people are now blaming NWA um, as killing, helping to kill the consciousness in rap. I'm not going to blame NWA. I'm going to blame the labels that no longer signed the, the conscious rap, okay? Uh -huh. I'm going to blame NWA for being something such as a tool. It was a tool. What I mean by tool, it was instrumental in um, the killing off of gangster rap. I mean, uh, conscious, conscious rap. rap. How? How? How was the instrumental? It's instrumental because that's all you heard, that's all you saw, and that's all was being signed. And the youth, I'm going to say it again, the youth, I bear witness because I was there, was making conscious rap. Why? Because that's all they saw on TV. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to take it back further. When you was a young guy in the 60s and you wanted a record deal, your black ass was doo-wopping. And, and doo-wopping. You, you was in Detroit. You was in uh, wherever the hell you from, singing on the street corners, doo-wopping. Boo-whoop. <laughs> they you know was on their temptations. Yeah, temptations was do whopping. They was called the Elgins at first, right? Right. Why? Why was they do whopping? Because that was, was what was being shown to our community, and we were dressing like that. We was wearing the conk. We was doing everything. So we mimic the music industry, and the music in industry mimic what was happening in our culture, right? Right. Thus, fast forward to the to the um rap situation where the message don't push me because I'm, I'm close. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The and edge. then public enemy fight the power, bring the noise, uh, criminal minded, um, a whole bunch of conscious right. rap that came out. So you see people mimicking that. Just like they was mimicking the doo-wop. So people was making records like, I want a record deal. And the only way you can get a record deal is to sound like what was being signed. Right. Conscious rap. Right. So now you have, or then you had the ushering in of gangster rap. And I can name all of them. Okay. And then you wonder how the hell they all get record deals replacing the Jungle Brothers, replacing uh, 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 Kubo Brand, D, Brand, uh, Brand New, New and Poor Righteous Teachers, right. and Paris, and all. How's these rappers getting replaced? Because the kids are saying the most popular rap now. So they're saying, I guess I got to shoot a nigga. I guess I got to, you know what I'm saying? And just like you're about to say with the female rap, speak you, on that. You already, get, get, before I even segue into that, 
first of all, they don't look at it. It was a form of art form and it was an outlet. And they were speaking about what was really going on in their neck of the woods. At that time, they didn't know truthfully, because if you was in LA, let the truth be told before that music came out, you really didn't know that that's what was going on in New York. You really didn't know that's what was going on in St. Louis. You really didn't know that's what was going on down South. Let the truth be told until they really came out with that music and started, you know, going to, uh, I want to say the Chitlin circuit doing, you know, their concerts and stuff before they got big and doing their arenas. They really didn't know that that was going on everywhere. So I really don't look at it as gangster rap. I look at it as don't think that you're segregated and this ain't happening in your neighborhood. This is what happened in this neck of the woods that other people was able to relate to it. Now that's how I see it. But also I look at it as why was they coming at Ice Cube like that? Truthfully, why was you? Are y'all coming at? Don't get me wrong because I like Little Kim. Let's not get it twisted. But are you coming at Little Kim for ushering in the Playgirl rap? Are you coming at Nicki Minaj for rebirthing the Playgirl rap? Are you coming at any of these other Playgirl sisters that to me... Now, when you say Playgirl rap, you know about porn rap, right? Play, I call it... I'm giving them the a little... I'm giving them a little bit of grace because I feel that they are ignorant to who they are and what they are portraying to my black is beautiful community of these ladies that are coming up in my community. I could care about the rest of them at the end of the day. I'm talking about my community. Do they come at them for that? Talking about, because at the end of the day, let's just keep it real. The first rappers that I know, I'm talking about females, females was MC Light. She wasn't naked at the end of the day. Okay, and, 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 and if you want to talk about something, ugh, uh, uh, uh. If you want to even go into the sexiness at the end of the day, salt and pepper. I don't care if they did have on their jackets what they pay. They still wasn't naked. They wasn't in no playgirl bunny type of things. Come on now. Uh -uh. Queen Latifah wasn't naked. Moni Love wasn't <laughs> naked. Roxanne Chate wasn't naked. So at the end of the day, I'm going to keep it a buck. Y'all want to redeem yourselves? Let's uplift my girl Scarlett. Let's let these females that really can can really got some lyricists and really come with it. Let me see you come in behind her. Because everything else that's out here, I'm sorry, hands down. Boo. So you're saying they need to come for these current rappers like they're coming at. So they're saying um, they're coming at Ice Cube for pretty much degradating hip hop. With, it, even though we know Ice Cube didn't. left the group and went to public, public. It, yeah, he started. It, he was with public enemy, enemy in them. I'm not trying to be funny. I mean, y'all don't even come at. Let's just keep it real. Dr. Drake for making the beats for it. Don't even uh, come look, at Drake. Uh, come at Drake for uh. And then, but you know what they do it, when they say NWA. They're saying NWA as a whole. I'm talking about the whole death row. You know what uh, Snoop Dogg and them said? Uh, Bitches shit but hoes and tricks. But, Lick who the balls. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? But I'm, I'm, that's what they're saying. I'm what I'm saying, but, but they don't come at there. different you they call so called hip hop icons like the Trinas and, and, and different ones. Well, oh, 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 she thinks she won. You know, they oh, got a whole trick. I'm just because you know they don't love no hip hop. Icon, no. But she thinks she won. She's a, she's a factor in Miami hip hop landscape. That's, um, yes, babe, but I'm. Babe, I watch all this stuff. I listen to the bull crap. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I said she thinks she was. I didn't say she was. Okay. I said she thinks she's. So you saying they should come at her? Hell yeah, you come at this. This is my thing. She Before, mimicking. She was mimic. She ain't original. Yes, she is, and that's why I said what I said. She is what you have, she's mimicking. All of that. At the end of the day, I, I don't see none of them, the playgirl rappers or the so-called. Uh, drill rappers, uh, 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 whatever that came after any of them. I don't see any of them giving back into the community. I don't see any of them graduating from where they starting at all. Baby, they came because that's their money maker. You can't just all money ain't good money. I'm just saying, baby, yeah. you didn't take a deal because of that. Know. I'm talking about uh, little Kim have no choice. You see, she changed her whole style up. That's who she is. That's her claim to fame. Okay, you, Ice Spice is going to be shaking her ass like that 
and every time she go out on the record, every time she go out to perform, and when she's little Kim's age, she's going to have to be sexy as Ice Spice. That's her claim to fame. Barring any, if she change it up, she's going to lose a record deal. And then let's say she lose a record deal. Let's say she get conscious right now and she lose a record deal, right? Any booking she get, she got to look like the Ice Spice of popularity. Same thing with Sexy Red. Same thing with Sexy Red. If she stops doing records right now and some consciousness hits her, in order for her to do shows, I'm sorry, she got to say stuff about her booty hole, okay? I'm just keeping it above. I, well, you know what? That may be so too, that, that, that may be okay to a certain extent, but I feel like this. At, at the end of the day, if you was really consciousness and you was about your people and you was about changing some things or whatever, mm -hmm. you would be the person that would say, at the end of the day, I was ignorant. I was dumb. I was out here talking about sucking and getting to come. But I'm going to let you guys know right now, I'm that chick and I'm on the one. Stop I'm rapping. Stop rapping. Just, uh, uh, what are we talking about next? Okay. Yeah, rapping and stuff. <laughs> yeah, just throw the nasty words in and stuff. Let's go. I just want them to apologize. <laughs> okay. Cardi B reacts to Tasha K's tearful video rant. I just can't afford the four million. Cardi B reacted to Tasha K's emotional video rant in which the popular vlogger admitted that her ego caused her legal trouble with the Bronx rapper. Tasha has reportedly proposed a, pay a payment plan to settle the case. In a recent video update, Tasha says she aided in tearing down Cardi B. She also reacted to Cardi's previous video admission that she was feeling depressed to the point of having suicidal thoughts. Tasha reached out to the rapper after Cardi's post about wanting to put a bullet in her head. Tasha K said she sent Cardi a DM that said, if you put a bullet in your head, Cardi, who is going to teach me to be a better person? Please stop posting stuff like this. I'm going to pay you. I just can't afford the four million. I said too many fans love you to be reading stuff like this and believe it or not, I love you. All right, they've been waiting on it. Let's talk, Char, let's go. Okay, so um, I watched the video that um, Tasha K had put up, um, and um, I could relate to everything that she was saying. And I also read the remarks that um, that Cardi B, you know, had said as far as it was concerned. What I did appreciate and like, because as myself and others, um, when they're talking about Tasha K when she was doing the um, uh, what is it? The uh, title, what is it? When when you go through the different stuff, you can't pay. Um, Donald Trump chapter did eleven. Yeah, Tra Donald Trump did it fifty thousand times. Um, bankruptcy chapter eleven. Yeah, the bankruptcy. Well. One thing I did um like and appreciate it when she was really breaking it down as far as the break the bankruptcy and saying what she don't have. It wasn't the point of basically she was trying to get out of paying because after she talked about it, I went and did my own little homework and I kind of understood where she was coming from. She has a business. Um, the way that she went about targeting Cardi B, trying to you know make her channel blow up and everything. It was a $4 million lesson <laughs> that she had to learn. And she's basically saying, you know, you're going to get your money. It's just I don't have four million right off the top to pay you. She went into telling us a little bit about um, some of the things that she has been through and why she started her channel. And then, you know, it not working out with her with radio, different things like that. And then Cardi B, basically, I guess now this is my opinion. She saw the lie. Not only did she see the lie, but she also got the DMs that Tasha K sent to her because of the things that um, Cardi B put on her Twitter after her birthday. I don't know what triggered that or if it was a stunt because she got something coming out or whatever. But how I seen it from the article is, you know, Cardi B look at it as, now that's just my opinion, Tasha didn't learn her lesson, you know, um, and Tasha didn't been through some things. And she is doing big things on the YouTube that a lot of the vloggers or YouTubers are following in her footsteps, trying to get to 
where she at. And you know what? I ain't trying to tear this woman down like that, you know, because she ain't got it like that. And in her own little way, she was humble enough to say the way I went about things was wrong, you know. And I need for y'all not to be coming at Cardi because, you know, the, of the tweet that she put out about, you know, that she didn't want, she don't like seeing another woman cry. And she know that another woman is going through some stuff, even though she didn't mention Tasha K's name. So if y'all haven't seen the live, y'all can go check it out on YouTube. It is um, on there. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of people can relate to that. But I will say that um, I commend Tasha K for basically saying that, you know, her ego and her pride got her into the situation that she was in. But uh, what about the love? <laughs> the way Howard denies sexual assault. Hope's mates and others recognize who met his humanitarian efforts. Dwight Howard has denied the sexual assault accusations made by Stephen Harper, who was suing the eight-time NBA All-Star for assault and battery, false imprisonment, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Howard hopes that people who have commented on the situation publicly, like Mace, can see the good he's done. A statement issued by his publicist to Hip Hop DX, which was made on Sunday, October the 29th, made clear that Howard prefers the focus to be on his humanitarian efforts, not on his private life or the suit. It is also called to the credibility of his accuser into question. This is a civil case that was made public for profit. In this case, the accuser is solely suing Dwight Howard and has refrained from suing the other party in which he claims to be involved. The statement begins. It is important to note that these matters were never about sexual assault. This was merely about money and greed. The rapper slash host makes citing the reports tied to Howard as a reason he isn't on the NBA roster this season. But the rapper turned talk show host seemed less concerned about the alleged assault than about the fact that the accuser was a man. We gotta stop telling people, I don't care what you do on your own time, because we do care, and women, you got to stop. We got to stop telling ninjas. What you do in your own personal time has nothing to do with me. It does matter. Those are the lies that are going on in society. Mace begin. Of course, we did the video about um, Dwight Howard's reaction. It did pretty good. We did a short on it. Right, we made the video and then we cut it into a short, shared it, it did, uh, did well. Big ups to the people that watched it and shared it. But now we're going to talk about it specifically. Like what May said, the people say it's, it's, they say his business is his business. Mace believe it's not just your business if everybody's talking about it, right? It's, yeah, it's the true. community's business that's and true. it's something to talk about. I see you with that. But I also believe like what Dwight said, wherever he put his wood at, that is his business, which I don't think nobody can come at him if he's gay homosexual, bisexual, or whatever it may be, that's his situation. I can care less. If my homeboy is playing like that, I, I really can care less. It don't matter to me, right? But my thing is this, bro, if you in inboxes, you know what I'm saying, song and dancing, you, that's, the inbox is a dangerous, it's a dangerous I mean, thing. It is. And, but it, it is. But it, I mean, it is. But come on, bro. Come on, bro. He was in your inbox. Now this this yep. is me. I'm 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 an outsider looking in. The man was in your inbox. You responded. You went over and willingly participated. And after you participated, now this is me on the outside looking in. Maybe you didn't get as much attention as you thought you was going to get. You know what I'm saying? He never said he participated. He said he was forced. Yeah, that's what he said. So we got to say that. We can't say he participated. Okay, allegedly, 
you were forced. Um, it, uh, he, it, 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 Dwight said he looked at like. He was uncomfortable. No, it was alleged that Dwight said it looked it like he was, was uncomfortable, so he stopped. That's what Dwight said. I mean, that's what it allegedly said. Yeah. When well, you're talking like they do on, social, on um, the reality show, you're not a girl be doing whatever I, the hell that is. Because I'm channeling the bullshit. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. He said he don't care. He don't care, he he said, don't uh, care if he's doing what he doing. Yeah, he doing. I mean. Well, he ain't I, lying. I mean, he said he ain't have to rape him. That's what that, he's saying. Basically, uh, okay, I think that's what he said. I ain't have to. I, 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 no, I'm, I'm a star. Uh, I ain't got to uh, rape me now. Uh, and let's uh, not get uh, out. Let's not get all out the pocket now. I, I am uh, a star now. Uh, you are over uh, there. Uh, we ain't gonna go too far. We're not. <laughs> we not. We just not. But what I will say is, I do agree with Mace. With the um, we do gotta stop with the. You know, we don't care, you know, about what you do. At the end of the day, our podcast is The Usual Suspects. We talk about what people that the majority of us follow, or if you don't follow, we bring it to the forefront of what's popping and mm -hmm. what's, what's going on, especially in our community, because what? <laughs> we hip hop, baby, and we're going to talk about it, whether it be sports, music, movies, whatever the case may be. So at the end of the day, when you're a public figure and you have certain things going on in your life, if it comes to the forefront, we're going to talk about it. So it's not like we don't care because we do. And also we are powered by the reporter newspaper and the reporter newspaper online.com. I said two things. Number one, the reporter newspaper is an actual tangible newspaper. Allow me to get this. So you got black it's owned, a real newspaper, black owned and black operated. and black operated been in business for over 50 years. And let you know what she was talking about, that this is the news. And we do have an entertainment section in there. So if it's in the news, we are the digital or the visual representation of what's being said in the newspaper. You also can go to the reporter newspaper online.com online .com. to see what's happening digitally. Speaking about what's happening digitally, let's keep going, girl. What we got? Okay, so we got um, academics, anchors, Young Miami, and Saucy Santana with. Brutal city girl's criticism. Academics has found himself in the hot seat after delivering brutal criticism of the city girl's latest album. Over the weekend, a video surfaced on social media of Academics delivering a review of the Florida duo's latest effort, Raw the follow-up to their 2020 sophomore album, City on Lock. I talked to almost the head of the RIAA. They told me this shit went 15 times plastic. He ridiculed the project, which debuted at number 117 on the Billboard 200 after selling a reported 10,000 units in its first week. They said, at, this is the first triple plastic certification we've given out. He said the last time they dropped the record, it went double styrofoam. But now we got to go to plastic. He continued, they said, basically, it's like a fast food order. Paper or plastic? Listen, these two are down horrendous. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. The City Girls wave has fizzled out musically. Needless to say, academics' outspoken commentary did not go unnoticed by Young Miami, who took to Twitter to clap back at the criticism. If you ain't about that murder game, then pussy nigga, shut up. Please, she wrote. Okay, okay. You know what? I see you, Ack. I see you I'm going styrofoam. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, and plastic. And plastic. You know, and, and you know, I like when he said, "Hey, hey, hey, girl, you might have to do the sway lead." You know what I mean? I mean, that's my guy. He had to lead a group, or have to. Well, not necessarily leave the group. Sway Lee was like the most popular guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what did they say? They say, "Yo, we're gonna pay him because he's the face. He's the voice." 
and he's the guy that makes it happen. So I don't know if he's necessarily solo, but he do all the the hooks and all that stuff, the features by himself without the other little rapper and partner. And Ak is suggesting that the the other girl leave Young Miami alone, you understand? And do that and let Young Miami do her podcast because he's saying their run musically is over. I understand it only sold ten thousand cop ten thousand in, in the first week. In the first week. Yeah. And um it's not doing well. Um you thought they did real well on the BET Awards. You thought no. they were shaking it. Yeah, no, I said they were entertaining. Now I said that they were entertaining, meaning that the show that they put on was good. I didn't say that their lyrics was all that. I didn't say that the delivery was all of that. You have entertainers and you have entertainment. They were the entertainment of entertainers. I'm sorry. They can't rap. I'm sorry. Okay, you said they was dope though that night. Yeah, I did. I non rappers be the dope. Performance. The performance. The performance. I didn't I, I didn't hear you dancing on. Were these the people dancing? And yeah, they, they had all the little girls out there. All the uh, rappers had, every girl rapper had strippers on the stage. I'm look, confused. The best, the best out of all of them I seen, the, the, the best, the, well, it was Sexy Red. It was um, um, the little, uh, it was what Sexy Red, about? Gorilla, and it was them. Uh, you, uh, on the BET Awards. You see, uh, but at the end of the day, their album not selling that well. That was a spring, supposed to springboard the new album. A lot of these awards are used to push some new music. Obviously, it's not doing well for no, them. So no. that is what it is. What I, we got next? No. Uh, <laughs> we got Blueface. Alleged suiting victim claims he was jumped over Playboy Bunny t-shirts. Blueface's allegedly shooting victim has come forward with more details regarding why he believes the Tatiana rapper targeted him. In his first sit-down interview since the incident, Kentavious Tay Trailer, who was allegedly shot by Blueface outside a Las Vegas strip club last October, spoke with Cam Capone News to share his side of the story. During the interview, Osborne claimed he was jumped outside the club over his choice of attire, specifically a t-shirt featuring the Playboy Bunny logo. A guy hit me, I said, all right, I'm about to beat your ass. I pulled up my pants and I got ready to fight. And the next thing you know, I'm getting jumped, he recalled. Honestly, it all started because of a shirt I had on. I just had on a Playboy Bunny shirt. That's how all this started. They thought I was from a rival gang or something. I've seen a video of my man, <coughs> excuse me, on what's the name of that? Uh, Cam Capone News. Cam Capone News. Yes. Big up to Cam Capone. <laughs> okay. Big up to Cam Capone. Boo. Um, what the guy was saying, I'm talking about the guy who got shot by uh, and dealt with by Blueface. Okay. Um, he was saying basically that um, he believed the courts showed favoritism because Blueface a rapper. Had Blueface, uh, had he shot up somebody, he would think he would have been in jail a little more. But the thing I thought was really crazy is when the man said the real reason why they, they the, the little fight jumped off. Was because of a Playboy teacher. I'm gonna say it again. They fought over a piece of clothing, saying that that Playboy represented another gang or something. Talk about what you heard with some the, authority. I don't yeah, know. The, yeah. The the interview. Now, what I got out of the interview, okay, um, it was a Vlad uh, lookalike interview, but. What I got out of the interview is the young man was basically saying that um, he didn't really say anything or he didn't want to be jumped on or shot at. Um, and also that he had on a Playboy T-shirt that he said maybe Blueface and the people he was with thought that he was maybe from a rival gang. And that kind of confused me, per se, because I don't know any gangs. 
in the United States. Well, you, maybe with that's the not. Plate true. Well, well, obviously you're not a, a part of gang life, so you wouldn't know. But let's fish you. What's going on with your chair? Why are you looking at the face? <laughs> well, you don't look like you don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking no, about? it's not that I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm shocked. Okay. I'm just saying, I'm, 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 I'm shocked. That's what I'm saying. I'm shocked. He made comments on saying basically that, you know, if he had a shot, someone, that he would have got, you know, more time or they it would have been, you know, looked at more into or whatever because he wasn't famous. And then he also was saying things that didn't make sense to me. Like he went to the police station and they were closed. And I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I've never known the police station ever to be closed when you need to make a report, especially when a shooting is involved or some harm has been done to you. So I was kind of lost with that. Um, also that he said he got fired from his job. I'm not I'm not comprehending anything. He's not suing anyone. When I know that we just talked about it last week about a club suing Blueface for millions for the club being shut down because of the shooting and all of the incident and everything that's happened. This man that lost his job. Um, he went to jail and he had to uh, have a bill of $5,000, you know, all kind of different stuff. And I'm like, I'm not understanding. I don't get what really happened. I don't understand why Blueface put his hands on him. Guy says it's because he had on a t-shirt. And hey, baby, it's that simple. You do get it. You just don't want to believe it. It's literally what he said. Sometimes we got to hear what somebody say and don't try to make it different. That's exactly what happened. He said he, he got into a fight over a damn T-shirt. And that's the status of some of our people. Now, hell, I could bear witness of people getting getting in the fight for stepping on a tennis shoe. Well, it's that's not true. Fight fight. I, mean, I mean, that's true. What we that's talking true. about next, girl? I mean, that's true. Suge Knight starting a podcast for prison. Akon has responded to Suge Knight's claim that he raped a 13-year-old girl. The Death Row co-founder launched his new Collect Call podcast from prison last week, during which he claimed that the Smack That artist and his longtime producer, Detail, sexually assaulted the 13-year-old sister of one of Knight's associates, as well as her 12-year-old friend. Taking to X on Sunday, October the 29th, Akon denied Suge Knight's claims, calling the story a lie. The world knows a lie when they hear it, he wrote. It's unfortunate that this man is going out like this. It's sad and seriously embarrassing. Regardless of our history, I'm still going to be praying for him, he added referencing to their past speak. Um, <clears throat> apparently he coming out on his first podcast. What's that podcast called? Collect Call Podcast. Collect, <laughs> Collect Call Podcast. Apparently he coming out swinging, making accusations of my yes, man, Akon. Yes. And that's not something to be played with. No. Uh, well, I want to go in too deep, but he alleged that Akon was responsible for raping Younglings, okay. I yes. ain't gonna say the ages because I think it's gross and right, everything. Right, right. And but Akon comes out and he said that uh, it's terrible that my man got to go out like this. Now, what do you mean by that? It's terrible, my man got to go out like this. This is Suge Knight, the executive, the founding, the part founder of Death Row, Tupac, right. for, dude, Snoop Doggy Dog, Dr. Dre, all these accolades he got that he have to resort to. Uh, um, uh, I don't want to say ratting because he didn't, because uh, Akon didn't do it, but the resort to gossip, the gossip. But, yeah, because but, you know, he's dropping tea. tea. Well, okay, God yeah. damn it, he's dropping. He's, and then it's fake tea. He's in. He's doing podcast. Here's somebody that was once afraid, people was afraid of. Now he's squilling. Well, not squilling because I'm not saying no. Because because that's yeah, not right. because but, if you uh, listen uh, to uh, the podcast, he really wasn't. Squilling. He was just giving some details, and then he was basically saying the reason why the police wasn't involved was because he gonna handle it but, yeah. himself. But uh, yeah. your man saying, Akon saying it was not the truth. Right. This guy is just literally being trying to be relevant during these times. And um, I will say, what a dope name for a podcast hey, for somebody to collect. Up. Call, collect call podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What we yeah. got next, girl? <laughs> yeah, that is dope. Tyrese's ex-wife 
Samantha Lee has finally admitted to her role in the demise of her relationship with the singer and Fast and Furious actor. In two separate videos that went viral on Saturday, October the 28th, the licensed social worker addressed the final points of her marriage, including the role she played in its ending. I'm not allowing this to be twisted, she said in the first video. I took accountability in that interview. I don't take back anything that I said. When you grow and you learn and you're in relationships with people, and you, go from, and you go from those relationships and grow from those relationships, you have to take accountability for what you did and your part in it. I don't really like all this tea. I feel like tea ain't for D, okay? Like I shouldn't be spilling the tea. But we got Let's Talk Char in the building. You can explain this stuff. That's why you here. Talk to him, let him know what's going on. I have no clue. Of what's going on? I'm gonna be honest about this. I didn't. I I, I, uh, I did the article. Um, I got it from another spot, and I'm showing it. But I knew you was gonna be here. Yeah. You can talk about this here mess. Okay. So, um, Samantha Lee. Um, she has a podcast. Has been having one for a while, and um, she basically is a relationship person. She talks about basically call herself helping men basically and she's talking about the relationship so this past weekend um she talks about not this past weekend but the weekend before um she was on a podcast and she was basically admitting uh to the things that she did and who, who was doing this samantha lee this is tyrese's ex-wife okay i didn't know that so uh, okay so this i have is, no idea who samantha lee is okay she's tyrese's ex-wife okay. educate so, uh, me so um they've been going to through this divorce basically for a couple years and she basically admit that she had people in her ear and she's trying to say that the way she went about for with the divorce with Tyrese mm -hmm. she was wrong she basically admitting that everything Tyrese has been saying that many have ridiculed him about or basically made fun of him about that he was not abusing her. He did not cheat on her or any of these type of things. And that he was fighting and, you know, was whatever issues that they was having in this marriage that he was fighting for. it. So she's admitting it. So Tyrese gets on line after she basically said it because it went viral. Her basically saying that she, she was wrong or she made a mistake filing for the divorce. Okay. Tyrese had to let it be known. No, 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 no. You know exactly what you was doing. And if you felt that way, then you not telling the courts that you're making a mistake for asking for $20,000 for a two-year-old, a three-year-old child. And not only that, he basically put her on blast and said, you was trying to get back with me after basically you had been out there and seen that the grass went greener on the other side. And I said, no, because I'm now dating somebody else. And that's not fair to her after you got to think about it. He's been online talking about, he loved his wife and begging all this stuff or whatever. But she went on and did whatever she was going to do and mess with whatever she was going to mess with. And Tyrese even kind of put her on blast when we was waiting for him to tell it. If I told who you was messing with, when we first broke up, you would go viral again. So at the end of the day, Samantha, that's what you get. You had a good man and you lost him. <laughs> I'm just saying, because now it's coming out. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm kind of happy because as our culture and, you know, in the Black is Beautiful community, we tend to always look at it's the man. And it's something that they did or they deserve this or the woman deserves to be whatever. And then you have one that if you ask me, many shunned for him being vulnerable online to say, I loved my wife. I wanted my relationship. I didn't do this. And then she going to wait a couple of years later after many of the men and kind of poked fun at him, basically crying out you know, to everybody and basically trying to say, I'm a good dude. You know, my wife, I don't know why she doing this. Now all of a sudden, 
Thank you, Tyrese, for, for getting your balls back to let her know you was out there, you did what you did, and you can't come back. Well, all right. I don't like you talking about nobody else's balls. What, what, babe? I, mean, I was just saying, saying he got his manhood man back. Okay. I mean, Damn. Oh, God. I apologize. Okay. He got his manhood back. All right, lay off the man's balls. Right? <laughs> What we got next, baby girl? Oh, oh, what we got next is we love that you guys tune in to The Usual Suspects every week. And again, I love the comments. I would like to hear about your thoughts and your opinions about some of the articles that we talked about today. Don't forget all the articles that I read are on the reporter newspaper online.com on the entertainment section and you know at the bottom of the articles there's always videos down there for you guys who are visual people if you haven't liked this channel please take the time out and do it right now you guys liking the channel and watching us helps keep us in your algorithm i am your girl Char johnson and i'll see you guys next week with my husband the guy brother hyrule i came